Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video. And in today's video, I'm bringing to you guys my full comprehensive TypeScript in React crash course. So this is a continuation from my last week's video, which was my TypeScript crash course. And I got a lot of positive feedback from you guys. And I really wanted to make a video like this because it was requested. Now, you technically don't need to learn TypeScript or watch the previous video in order to understand this one. However, it would definitely help you get the topics uh, faster. However, in this video, um, what we're going to be learning is basically all of the TypeScript necessary to understand in order to use TypeScript in a React application. So if you've already been used to working in React using JavaScript, this video is for you because I'm going to be not only going over stuff like how to build an application in Vite using TypeScript, um, how to work with the different TypeScript types when dealing with your variables, but also how to implement TypeScript in your hooks, contexts, and much more. So in the end, we're going to be building a full component that is going to be fully written in TypeScript. Before we get into the video, if you could leave a like and subscribe, I would massively appreciate it. It is a thing that is really quick for you guys to do, and it will actually help push my videos to more people. So I would be eternally grateful if you guys could do that. So um, with that in mind, let's get into the video. This portion of the video is sponsored by today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. For those who don't know, Brilliant is a platform where you're able to learn a variety of STEM related topics through interactive problem solving like courses. They have courses related to literally everything you might want to know, ranging from uh, mathematics to different sciences and even computer science. I've personally talked about Brilliant in the past to you guys and I've recommended some of their courses like their LLM course and more specifically their algorithms and data structures course which can help you if you're actually going to study for an interview. But more specifically, I enjoy Brilliant because I believe that we have very similar styles of teaching. All of Brilliant's courses are designed in a way in which they bring on real life examples to facilitate your understanding of the topic. So if you kind of like my style of teaching, I definitely think Brilliant will be a good platform for you. Like I've mentioned, I've personally done some of the Brilliant courses in the past, but I wanted to actually give a shout out in this video for all of their courses in mathematics. If you go to Brilliant.org and go to their advanced mathematics course category, you'll see that they have courses ranging from uh, stuff related to pre calculus to uh, linear algebra and vector calculus and anything that you would learn in a normal mathematics degree. And speaking as someone who actually graduated with a math degree, um, I can tell you that math helps a lot with programming. It's not a necessary skill, but it definitely levels you up. So I wanted to shout that course out because I think you guys would benefit a lot from it. Plus their hands on approach means that you're not just passively watching their videos, you're actually actively solving problems that you would in a normal day to day scenario. If you're interested in checking them out, I'll put a link for brilliant.org slash Pedro tech in the description. Just for my viewers, you guys will get a 20% discount when you sign up for their annual premium subscription. Again, it's uh, brilliant.org slash Pedro tech. And now let's get into the tutorial. Okay, everyone. So right off the bat, you see I have here a small um, VS code window popped up. And I'm inside a folder called TypeScript react. So uh, I'm going to show you guys how to install a react TypeScript application. But before we do that, I just want to give you guys a brief explanation of why you definitely need to learn TypeScript in order to build react apps. So if you're learning react, I assume is because you either want to uh, get a job in the industry, or you want to build an application. And in both scenarios, I would 100% say that it's necessary to get to understand TypeScript. Because if you're learning react or using react in order to get a job in the industry, I doubt that you're going to be hired if you don't know TypeScript, because TypeScript is used in almost every single company. And if there is a company that is still building react applications using pure JavaScript, I would gladly say that I don't think it's a good company to work on because um, the application will probably not scale well and it will actually cause a lot of problems that will end up in the hands of you, the developer. So I think in that scenario, for sure you need to learn this. But also if you're building an application on your own, then you can make this decision to learn TypeScript as a technology, as a language and spend, I don't know, one or two days actually just learning it and that will save you months of debugging. Trust me, in the long run, this will save you so much time of debugging and it will actually make your application scale way more than it would if you were using just normal JavaScript. So 
Now that I explained why you definitely want to learn this, let's get to actually building the application. So uh, like I said, I'm going to be using uh, Vite to build this. So if you've never used Vite in the past, it's basically this, it's just a way for you to generate your React apps, just like Next.js, just like uh, create React app. However, Vite is a very handy way for you to do it. So in order to create an app with Vite, I'm going to run npm create Vite. Um, and then I'll say at latest, just so we get the latest version. And then I'm going to put a dot over here. So I'm going to press enter. And uh, it's going to ask us what kind of uh, framework we want to create a Vite app with. So you can actually use it for a lot of different options. I'm going to create it with React. And then you can see Vite actually allows you to just choose uh, the language straight up in the terminal. So I'm going to choose TypeScript. And as you can see, it will have generated the app, but to actually run it, I have to run the command npm install to install all the packages in the package.json. And uh, when that's done, and we want to run the app, I can run npm run dev. But for now, we'll actually not run it. I just want to open up one of the components over here um, and start explaining to you guys using this as a template to explain to you guys how TypeScript will actually work. So let's keep this simple, right? Uh, if you've never worked with uh, with TypeScript before, it is important for you to understand the different types that exist inside of TypeScript. And I will just briefly mention them. So you can create variables, right? So for example, you can create the variable name and set it equal to a string called Pedro. But in TypeScript, you have to define the type that this variable will have. So since this is a string, I have to come over here and say that it will have a value of string. Because if you don't do that, then um, TypeScript won't actually allow you to create this variable if you are in what is known as strict mode, which by the way, I definitely recommend watching my previous video to understand this It's just a way for you to um, that is determined uh, for you to actually keep checking to see if you're using TypeScript correctly. But defining types like this prevent you from later on coming over here and saying name is equal to 45, because then it will give you an error saying that you can assign a, a number to a string. So this is basic, the basic concept of what TypeScript does, right? And in React, this is great because any variable you want to create, right? Name, age, you can define over here the actual value or the type and set something. I can create like a is married Boolean and just say that this is a Boolean and set it equal to true or false. So you kind of get the idea. Now, I'll just uh, list three more types that I think are important for you to understand. Uh, before we get into actually doing what is mostly uh, just pure React and TypeScript stuff, this is more general TypeScript, but this is just what I think is important for you to get first. So to make a list, for example, a list of, uh, I don't know, numbers, like a list of ages, uh, uh, you actually just set the type like this, you say it's a number array, just like this, and then you set it equal to uh, a list of numbers, right? So if we ever work with lists, which you probably will a lot, um, you have to define it like this. Uh, what else? So there's the any type. So if you have a, a thing that you actually don't know what the type is, you can use any and then you can see that I can set this equal to anything like I can say person is equal to a string. And it won't, won't actually give us an error. But the thing is, I don't recommend using any because then it defi <laughs> defies the whole purpose of using TypeScript, right? And the last thing that I want to show to you guys is is the idea of creating um, interfaces. So creating your own type, if I were to create a component over here, now we're mostly going into what uh, TypeScript you actually use in react. So if I were to create a component over here, for example, I create a component called person, right? First of all, uh, the extension is not going to be JS, and it's not going to be JSX, it's going to be TS or TSX. Now, if you're going to be creating a component inside of this file, you definitely have to make this into a TSX or else it won't work. If you make it like this, uh, it's usually used for files like creating your types, creating functions and stuff like that. But if you're going to create a component, definitely make it TSX. Then over here, let's create a component, right? I'm going to export const person. And let's make it a simple component. Uh, I'll just return the text person. Now over here in the app.tsx, let's import this component. So I'll say dot slash person. 
and let's import person over here. Now, what I want to introduce to you guys is the idea of how do we define props using TypeScript? Because if you don't recall, when if I wanted to, for example, take in some props for an individual person over here, right? If I wanted to say that the props in this is, uh, and I'll say props over here, and I'll say that it will take in the following things. A person can take in a name, right? Let's say Pedro. It can take in an age, let's say 22. And uh, it can take in uh, is married, right? Which I'm not married, so I'll say false, right? So it takes in this props. And we have here props at the top. And actually, I just want to display that information. So I'll create here a P tag. And I'll say, um, first describe the name. So name, and then say props.name. And then I'll do the same for age. Um, age, and then I'll say props.age. And then over here, I'll just say this person. Um, and then I'll just change this depending on the Boolean. So I'll say props that is married. And I'll say if it is married, then this person is married. If the person is not married, then I'll say is single, right? So what if I want to create a component like this and reuse it how many ever times I want to, I'll even create another one, just as an example. Um, let's say, I don't know, call in. 24 and also not married or actually let's make him married. So true. If I wanted to create this, you can see there's a red line over here because it says that parameter props implicitly has an any type. So this is actually one of the best use cases for TypeScript in React because the following reason, when you create a component, if I were to come over here and I were to actually pass in a string for age instead of a number, it would actually work the same. So let's test this out. Let's run this thing. I'll say npm run dev. And let's grab this and then just paste it over here. Okay, so this is the app right now, right? It shows the two people. But if I were to change this to a string, you see that it still shows the same thing. It shows age is 22, right? Which means it must be working, right? If I changed this to uh, I don't know, a list of strings, then it will probably give us an error, visually speaking, but it doesn't even give us an error, visually speaking, which is crazy, right? It's just showing what what's there. So that's the thing. Uh, with uh, TypeScript, um, or with React in general, props can whenever they have an implicit any type, which means that uh, since we didn't define this type, the type for props, it's assuming that the type is any, right? Um, it can actually show us no visible sign of, of actual misconduct in our code like this. So it seems like everything is working perfectly. But in itself, if we ever use this variable for anything more than just displaying this, it can actually cause some bugs because it's not the type that we wanted it to be. So this is kind of why we definitely want to define the types. Now you've seen this before if you've ever worked with prop types, which is something that comes directly with React. However, uh, TypeScript makes it also very easy to do the exact same thing, which is define exactly the type of props you want. And the way we do that is by using what is known as an interface. So like I said, uh, there are some primitive types in TypeScript, like string, number, and Boolean. But you can actually create um, custom types that define objects. They are known as interfaces. So I'll create a interface called props. And I'll just assign the props of this component to be equal to that. So we want this props object over here to have three fields, name, age, and is married. So we'll come over here and we'll define the three fields like this. So I'll say that this has a name, which is a string. It has an age, which is a number. And it has, has an is married, which is a Boolean. So now, TypeScript doesn't give us a red squiggly line anymore because it knows that um, we have defined the correct type. And more importantly, you see, this is a Boolean, right? So if we were to use this Boolean wrong, over here, we're definitely using it right. We're asking, okay, if the person is married, if true, 
then do this. If false, do this, right? But if we try to, for some reason, display the Boolean as a as a string, right? So I said props that is Mary. We'll see that nothing really happens, but it also doesn't show it in our screen. But if we were to compare this to something like, uh, I don't know, a name like Pedro, you'll see that immediately it gives us an error because the comparison seems to uh, <laughs> try to compare two things that are not of the same type, which means that TypeScript is definitely checking almost all interactions that you have with your app. Um, and by defining your prop like this, it makes it easier for you to not cause stuff like what I did before, because now if I were to change this to a string, it immediately notifies us. And I think it also um, might show over here. Um, it actually depends a lot on how you define your TS config. Apparently it doesn't seem to be doing that. Um, but if we were using uh, some sort of uh, linting library like ESLint, um, it could actually manually trigger a break in our app. So we can actually have a more clear visible error um, if there's a TypeScript error. Now, in this case, we just get the red squiggly line, which let us know that this isn't the correct type. But as you might have noticed, this is really useful because also you can just make multiple types in your app. You can actually, uh, if, if this should define a person, right? We, we call the person over here. So instead of putting props, we could actually just call this person and then use this in many different places in our app. Maybe when we're trying to deal with data, maybe when we're making a query that grabs back per people, right? So we could do something like that. Also, if we wanted to make this into a list, right? Uh, the props is actually a list of people. I could actually just put the array over here and um, loop through this props uh, that is now is an array, it's not an object, and display the information just like I said it would. So um, you can see how useful defining props and your types actually is. Now, one reason why this might also be very useful is um, dealing with bugs with bugs where you're, you're actually rendering a component based on some sort of, I don't know, function, right, that makes a request. Let me create an example here, like fetch user. And as a, <laughs> an example over here, I'm not actually going to be fetching anything. Imagine that this returns back uh, an object for a user, right? It returns back uh, name is equal to Pedro. Um, age is equal to um, 22. But then is married is equal to no, right? So imagine that this is what it's returning. And then over here, I grab back the user, user fetched equals to fetch user. Let's pretend we call this function. And I pass uh, the information, user fetched dot name, user fetched dot age, and then user fetched dot is married. This will give us an error because it is saying that it can be null. So this kind of forces you to, even when you're fetching data um, from an API or something, to actually make sure that you're handling cases in which the data is null so that um, inside of this function, I would probably make a call like, oh, if any of the fields are null, then display an error. So it will force you to actually error handle everything, which is great for preventing bugs. Okay, let me just control Z all of this. Um, and let's move on from the interface part of this tutorial. Now, the next thing I think is important for you guys to understand is using uh, TypeScript when you're working with certain hooks. So let's as an example over here, inside of the person's uh, uh, component, create a hook, right? Let's create a, a state um, called um, new state. And this state will be a button, which um, will toggle some sort of uh, will toggle if it shows the information or not, right? So I'll say show info, or is show info. And the other one is set show info. So I'm going to wrap all of this around with the is show info. And we only want to display this information if that Boolean is true. And um, oh, I do have to put this to wrap all of this around. And I probably need to put a small bracket over here. Just like this, not bracket, uh, a small fragment. And then this how we normally would do with JavaScript is we would actually put the initial value of the state 
uh, to actually infer the type. So if this is a Boolean, we would first put false and then basically React would know that this is a Boolean, right? Um, but the problem is that um, things can happen, right? I could come over here and say set show info is equal to Pedro. Now, because TypeScript already is inferring that this is a Boolean, it actually will already infer enforce this um, for us. So we actually don't have to define any types on the use state. However, it's still highly recommended that you put the actual type um, inside of the state so that you actually are sure that you're using it correctly. So the way you set the type for this or determine the type for this is by adding uh, a little thing over here and writing the type. So I'll say Boolean, just like this. And the great thing about this is sometimes uh, the type of a state can be s something like a Boolean or a string or something, but it could also be null, no, right? It can also be empty data. So when you're working with a situation like that, Imagine that I want to accept it to be false or true, but I also want to accept it to be null. Um, you can actually use what is known as a union. So a union allows you to um, say that this type over here will allow either one thing or another. So by doing by, by adding the union like this, you can say that this accepts both Boolean or null. So you can see null doesn't have a red squig line anymore, but also true will not have it. False will not have it, but Pedro will because it's not part of the type unless I say that a string is also allowed over here. So we'll keep it actually just as a Boolean. That was just a tangent that I wanted to show you guys. And let's create a function called toggle uh, info. Um, and this function is pretty simple. Whenever we click on it, we just set the show info to be equal to the previous value and the opposite of what it was before. So uh, if it was true, it will become false. If it was false, it will become true. And then I'll put a button over here that will say toggle info and we'll set the on click to that. Now, this should work as you can see over here. Uh, if I click on toggle info, it should show that. If I click on this one, it should show the other one. If I click again, it should hide and it works perfectly, right? But the important thing is that we are sure that our state has the correct type. Now, what if we have a state that is a little bit more complicated instead of just a, a button? Imagine we have an input, right? We have an input over here, which will be a will accept a text. And I actually want to have a state that allows me to type something in my screen, like a mini description of this person, right? So what if that's a situation I want to have? So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to have a little uh, p tag over here which is going to say something like, uh, let me grab the name. So props.name uh, bio, something like that. And then over here, I want to display some sort of biography of this person. But this biography will only be determined as I type on this input. How would I do that? Well, first of all, let's delete this and let's create a state that is going to keep track of what I'm typing on the input. So I'm going to say const is equal to use state. Again, this will be a string. So I have to define the type over here. And initially, it will be an empty string. So actually, in this situation, it's a great moment for us to maybe say that this could also be null instead of empty string, because that's just an easier identifier, right? Over here, we can say, uh, if uh, let's actually create the name of this state, let's say, per uh, bio bio. Yeah, I'll say person bio, and then set person bio, something like this. So we can say, if person bio is equal to null, then we just want to say something like uh, no bio available. But if it is not null, then I want to set it equal to person bio. Uh, if you're checking for uh, something to be null, you can actually not even do this. You can just say, okay, if not person bio, then uh, show this because this is the same thing as asking if person by is equal to no. So now let's implement the functionality. Oh, and I'll, also let me delete this because we're not doing that anymore. Uh, let me write the functionality for 
typing on this input and being able to store that value inside of this because this is what where I want to get I want to show you guys how to deal with TypeScript in situations where you're working with form events, because that's a, a little bit weird when you're starting out. So inside of this input, we're going to have an on change, right? And it's going to call a function called handle change. And let's create that function const handle change is equal to uh, a normal function that just sets the person bio equal to whatever the value of this input is. So in this function, we're going to have an event, right? But the problem is I can't just say event dot target dot value because this has no value. You see, it has an any type. Now, what is the type that we put for this event? Well, this is a predetermined type that already comes with react if we if we want to. So um, the specific type for when you want to grab a change event from an input is defined like this. It is called react dot change event. So whenever you have an input um, that you're you're using the on change and you want to grab the type from that, it is the change event from that input. And then you specify inside of this thing, which specific type of input or form element um, you are describing. In this case, it is an HTML input element. Now, this seems weird, but this is exactly the type specific for the event inside of the on change function. Um, and if you ever forget this, don't worry, if you do a small Google search, you'll find the answer for this. Because I remember when I was learning this, I was like, I'm never going to memorize this um, until I did. But after a while, right, because it took me a while to memorize this, but I could just search on Google whenever I wanted. So you see, in this case, this would work. And we could see that this would actually generate the app that we want. Like I, it says right now, no bio available, but I can say Pedro is a very nice person. And it works perfectly. So this is uh, kind of the idea for this specifically. Um, there are other event types. For example, if you I know this isn't a form, but if you had a form and you had a handle submit function that I mean, it's not applicable to this example specifically, but um, you guys definitely ran into a situation where you had a, a function that submits a form um, and you wanted to grab the event uh, inside of this function. The type for that would be react dot form event because it's a form and then it would be an HTML form element. So just memorize this if you're interested. But if you ever have an on, uh, on submit, uh, you can do that. And then you can use this event to do something like prevent default or whatever you would want to do in this scenario. But this is just some basic form events uh, that I think are important for you to understand and there are specific types. Okay, everyone. So now that we dealt with some form events, um, I think it's time for us to get into a little bit more complicated stuff. So what I want to teach you guys is how to correctly use TypeScript when working with the context API. And this is a little bit big because um, it allows you to understand a lot of type uh, interface creation and defining types with different um, hooks in React, like the, the use context hook, right? So what I want to do is to continue this example that we've been working on so far, I want to create a file called the user context. So I'll create a file called the user context dot um, TSX. So let's create a file over here called the user context provider. And this will actually be a TSX file, because we're going to return back a custom uh, provider component for this uh, context that we're going to create. So first things first, um, I know this is called person, but let's change the name of this to user because I feel like it's more uh, it's an easier thing to understand uh, when we're working with uh, websites instead of person. And I'll change all of this. And I'll keep the name of the file as person, whatever. But one thing I want to do is you see that this user type over here was created inside of this component. If we're using the context API, uh, and, and, and we want to work with it, we probably want to keep them separate, we want to create actually a type for the props over here, not call the user because not necessarily, they will be the same thing. In this case, they kind of will. 
but um, in many other scenarios, they might not be. And inside of the user context provider, we'll create the user type or just user, right? And we'll export it for here, from here so that it can be used anywhere else in our app. It's better keeping it here than keeping it inside of a, uh, an individual component. And then we have to create what is known as the context type because uh, we're going to create a context that is going to include not only um, a list of users, but also a function that is going to um, be able to add a user to a list of users. Um, also a function that is going to be able to delete a user from the list want to update and want to just see the list of uh, users. So it's a very simple CRUD um, app inside of this context. So let's do that. Let's create the interface that is going to actually represent what the context will return. So we'll call it user context type. And inside of here, what do we want? We want to have a list of users. So I'm going to say users and it's going to be uh, user list. But it can also be null because imagine in a normal app, we would probably be f fetching this from an API. And the list can obviously be null. So we have to account for that. Then um, we want to create a list uh, or actually have here a function for adding a user, which will probably include um, a user inside of here. So uh, we can define the actual type of user like this uh, by saying that the function will have an argument called user and its type will be user. And we need to actually add a return type. I haven't explained it this yet. But when you define functions inside of interfaces, you have to define it like this. Um, the add user function will take in a user and it will return void. So we can just do it like this. Then we want to have the same thing, but for uh, updating, deleting and reading. So uh, reading actually is okay. We can just use the list of users over here to read. So for updating, um, we could, for example, take in over here, uh, ID of the user, which would be a string. Obviously, this is all examples, but it will be a string. And then we can also take in, um, I don't know, the, the is married <laughs> for the user. This is the thing that we're trying to update. And we can take in the new value for it. And um, actually, we don't even need to take that in because uh, we can just change it to whatever it is, like the opposite of what it is right now. And then for delete user, we can just take in the ID of the user and delete it from the list. Now, this is the actual what, what we're going to have inside of the context. This is what we can access if you here. I'm assuming you're used to the context API. So you kind of understand. But the thing is, we're gonna have a context that is gonna pass in all of those values. So in order to determine that that's actually how the context is gonna be, I'm gonna come over here and create the context, I'm gonna say user context is equal to create context. And then inside of this, we can actually put in uh, the user context type to tell react that this is has to be what we pass in to this context. We also have to obviously import the create context, as you can see from react. And uh, we have to pass a type over here. So what I like to do is I like to put pass in the initial like type for this. So I'll create a state called um, context initial values. And it will just be an object containing uh, users and its initial value will be uh, just an empty array, then or null actually, then for add user, we can just say that the initial value is just a function that returns null as well. Uh, update user will be a function that returns null. Delete user is just a function that returns null as well. So this is just so we can have an initial value for this context over here, and it stops giving us an error, right? Because remember, this context requires an object of this type. So here, not necessarily, this is how the data that we're going to be returning, uh, because inside of this uh, file, we're going to deal with fetching data, updating and doing all those stuff. But for now, let's just pass in an initial value like this. Then since we now have this user context, 
let's create the provider. So the way we do this is we have to create a component called the context user provider. So I'm going to say const user provider. And this function will take in some props, obviously. And um, the prop that we actually really want is just the children of whatever we wrap this component around. So down here, we'll just return back uh, for now nothing, but then we'll return back the props uh, children, just like this. Now you might realize that it gives us an error because it says that it has an any type. Now, if I were to click this, it would define the type for props like this. But the thing is, when you ever have to access the children from a prop in React and you're using TypeScript, so the way I would do this is I would actually create over here the interface for props again, but just for this one. And I would just define the children type as a React dot React node. This is how I normally do it uh, for determining, de determining a children when accessing it using TypeScript. You'll probably run into this in the future, so it's good to memorize this specifically. So we'll create this user provider. And the great thing about this, if you've never actually done this kind of formatting for creating uh, providers and contexts, is that inside of here, I can create the functions that are going to be returned back inside of this uh, context and create actual states because now it's all inside of this component. So we can actually create states. So I'll create a state called users and set users. Now what type this is, is um, a list of users. So I'll say user list. And it can also be no for recall, this is specifically the way we defined the users type, which means that uh, initially it will be no. But let's imagine that uh, we'll have a use effect over here. And in this user fact, in this example, I would uh, fetch some data over here uh, and return back and set the users to be a list of the following thing. Uh, let's create a fake user over here. So we'll say name is equal to Pedro, age is equal to 22, and is married is equal to false. So Obviously, I'm just doing this as an example, but inside of here, you would fetch data and set the users equal to that data. But since I don't have any API to fetch this, I'm just setting the users to the to this fake data that I'm putting inside of here. But at least we can now use this users list, right? Now, what I want is to wrap all of this around with the user context provider. So I'm going to say user context um, dot provider. And then over here, I'll do the exact same thing user context dot provider, and I'll pass in the value for this context, as uh, we only have right now users. So I'll say users, but right off the bat, you can see that there's an error, because it is following it's 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 missing the following um, properties add user update user and the user. So you might see already that it is actually uh, checking to see if we're actually passing the correct information. And it I'm happy that we were able to actually define the types for this context up here at the top. So it's telling us that we definitely need these three functions. So let's just create them. I'm not going to actually implement them, but let's just do it. Const um, add user. Um, and it requires a user. And let's actually just return null for this one. And then pass in over here. Uh, then let's do the same for update and delete. Both of them, I think they just require an ID, which is a string. So let's just do that. And they'll both return null as well. And delete user. And now let's pass them. And you see that as we pass them, they will, uh, the, the right squiggly lines will actually disappear. The only one here is uh, this one because apparently has no closing tag. So let's check what this is. Uh, oh, yeah, we should have put this over here. And then close this and you'll see that now our context provider works perfectly, which means that if I wrap all of this around with the user context, our user provider, actually, and I import that component, it means that now inside of this person component over here, I could technically 
uh, access that by using the uh, use context hook. If I pass in over here, the user context that I have to export actually, user context, right? If I Im uh, import that user context, uh, why is it not importing it? Uh, sorry about that. Let me just uh, try to import this over here. Uh, import from dot slash user context provider. And let me import the user context. If I do that, and I put this, oh, actually, I have to pass this over here, not there. Sorry about that. But if I do this, um, you'll see that it auto completes for us. See, it says it knows exactly the types that this context can return. So it can return a user, it can return an update user, it can return a delete user, and so on. So I hope you kind of got the idea. I know it, it feels a little bit convoluted. But whenever you work with a context API using TypeScript, this is kind of how I would go about it. I would define a type for the data that you're going to be manipulating or using in this context, uh, a type for actual the return values of this context, then pass all of those types to their individual respective places, and then actually make sure you pass them as the value of that provider. So this is kind of how a context would look like in TypeScript. Now, moving on from this, uh, I want to actually add, uh, go back to this thing that I was working on, right? And show you guys a concept called the enum, which is actually a great way for you to define a specific type of a property inside of your application, especially for situations like this. Imagine that we want to add something to this props, we want to add the country in which the user was born in. But the thing is, there's only so many countries, there's actually a specific list of countries in the world. And it's a defined amount. So you don't actually want to leave this up to like, like up to interpretation, you don't want to make country be a string, because there's actually a specific uh, amount of options that can go inside of this type. So what you can do is create an enum for this. So I can say, enum, countries, and then over here, I can actually define a specific value for each of the countries. For example, I can make Brazil as one of the options, and set the value of it to Brazil. Then I can make friends an option, set it equal to friends, I can make India an option and set it equal to India, and so on, right, I'll just put uh, United States as an option and set it equal to United States. And then over here, instead of having a country as a string, let's keep it as a as a country, right. And then down here, I'll just say, uh, P uh, country of origin is equal to props dot country. Uh, oh, I have to wrap this around. Sorry. Props dot country. Now you'll see that first of all, it's giving us some red squiggle lines because we haven't defined the country over here. Now, what do I put for this? Do I just put a string? Do I just put Brazil? Well, it will say that we can't do that. Because Brazil is not assignable to the type countries. Actually, with enums, you can do a really cool thing, which is if I export this enum type, right, I could come over here and import this, like this uh, countries, and then just choose what country I want, like this. Because if you actually uh, had this as an open ended option, I'll show you what could happen. So let's do country. And let's do countries dot, I don't know, India. And keep it like this, right? Now it allows us for to, us to have actual control over exactly what is displayed over here. Because you see, all of them are in capital letters, right? But if this was a string, and uh, I wanted to actually just write Brazil over here, you'll see that it would allow me to whilst the one I used the enum um, is kept in, in capital letters. So it allows you to keep some standard and actually um, keep users from coming here and writing something like I don't know, Wakanda, right, which is not a country in the real world, but it's clearly allowed here it makes us have some control over that. So 
using enums is really cool and really important in my opinion. Okay, guys, as a final part of this tutorial, uh, like I said, I want to show you guys how to convert a component that was previously written in JavaScript and make it into a TypeScript component. So as you can see, I made this component over here called user profile editor. It's a pretty intermediate component with like a bunch of different stuff. And I definitely want to make some changes that you've learned in this video that will allow you to uh, stop having some red squiggly lines because uh, no types were defined, right? So right off the bat, um, I want to take a look at the props, right? Let's start with the props. Um, I see that there's two props, user and on update. So let's create the interface for props. And let's put those two types, user. And I don't know the type for that yet, but then uh, I'll put the on update. Um, now, let's see what they what both of these types look like. So let's go to user, where is user used? So I'm going to control F and let's see where user is used. So it's we see already it's used inside of the on update. Um, but it doesn't seem to be used. Oh, see, it's used over here. It's used um, to define two different states. So it's used to define the name and the email. So those are two different things that definitely need to be in uh, the user type. Now, since there's multiple things inside of a user, a user will be an interface of its own. So let's say interface user. And let's grab the name, the name type, which is probably a string, right? I'm just assuming here. And email will be a string as well. Now, um, is this correct? Is there more that we can add here? Um, let's take a look. Seems like not. So I'll just actually set the user equal to this. Perfect. Now let's take a look at the on update. It seems like on update is not returning anything. It's just making a call, which means that I know that it will be a function that returns a void. But it takes in a user. And also, uh, it seems like it alters the value of user. So actually, um, it just actually takes a user as an argument. So we'll, we'll say that this function returns void, but it takes in an object like user of type user. Perfect. So now it seems like that's working. And how I def I say that this props is equal to that interface? Well, by just doing it like this. Now let's take a look at what else we have to do. There's more red squiggly lines. Well, there's a handle submit over here. And we've actually dealt with this in the past, right? Um, we have to, in order to grab this event, we have to define its type. And if you remember, I'll give you like 10 seconds to see if you actually remembered. Uh, the way you define this is by saying react dot form event, HTML form event, or form element. This is for the handle submit, not for the on change. And it seems like actually now everything is fine, right? So do you notice anything else that we probably want to do, even though it doesn't actually show us an error? Well, if you didn't notice, we haven't defined the types for the state. Now it's inferring the type because we passed the prop, which we defined the, their, its uh, types over here. But we still do need to set up the types for the states. So I'm going to come over here and say that the type of this is string. And the type of this is also string. And now we officially converted this whole component that used to be JavaScript into a TypeScript component. So if you're migrating from a JavaScript app to a TypeScript one, uh, this is the kind of work that you would probably be dealing with. Uh, maybe if it's a more complicated one, uh, more complicated component, you will probably have to spend more time. But I think that you got the idea from this. Now, one cool thing about using TypeScript is the fact that it allows you to understand how libraries work internally way easily. For example, if I click on the use state, we can actually see how React defined the use state, right? See, it has some types specifically. Um, these are, all, are known as generics. Uh, I didn't explain this video, but um, you would understand if you watched my other video. But um, you can see that you can see all the types and different TypeScript uh, functionality that is implemented with react and their specific hooks. Now, if you were working with any other library, you could see it as well on your own. And um, it actually helps a lot understanding how 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 react works as a, as a general thing, like you just 
um, take a look at how libraries implement their own things and how the things that you're using were actually made. So this is basically it for the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm posting every week and I would massively appreciate it. Again, thank you so much, Brilliant, for sponsoring this video. I definitely think you guys should check them out because um, just watching my videos, it works. But the thing is, always complimenting with knowledge that you can gain elsewhere is really important. And you would definitely help the channel. If there's a way for you to help the channel while also learning a lot is by doing that, by checking them out. And I'll massively appreciate it if you could do that. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I see you guys next time. Yeah.